Hey, I found the milk. So, in April of 2014, a bit less than 10 years ago, I uploaded a video called Warrior Cat's Saddest Deaths Top 5, featuring art of these deaths that I had made myself. Starting in 2020, I have been redrawing these pieces every two years. This video is the fourth time I'm drawing the same kitty cats dying, and I have lots to say, so without further ado, let's get started with number 5, Feather Tail. Now, when I looked at the drawings I made in 2022, I was initially a bit concerned, because these are all good art. I, I like all of these. Which is not to say that they're perfect. They certainly have issues here and there that I would strive to fix, but given the fact that the last time I drew a warrior cat was six months ago, I was a bit nervous that I wouldn't be able to improve upon the 2022 drawings. I had this rule for my previous redraws that I would try not to change the composition unless it was genuinely a problem, and that I would try not to spend too long on any single piece. So the only way for me to show improvement would be to actually have improved my art skills. I think the only issue I really had with the previous Feathertail drawing was that it's slightly off-center and the pose is a bit stiff. The other things I'm changing are less about fixing issues and more about approaching the drawing itself in an entirely different way. You may be already noticing that I am leaning more towards this sort of almost realistic style rather than the more cartoony or anime-esque style that I was doing in 2022. I have been thinking a lot about my relationship with animal fantasy and what its appeal really is to me, and I've come to the shocking conclusion that at least for me personally, a lot of the appeal comes from the fact that they're animals. <laughs> I find it fun to think that if cats were intelligent and forming a society of their own, they indeed might groom each other every noon and have strict laws about how often to piss to, to mark their territory. I find that a lot of the later Warriors books don't really adhere to this aspect of the world building anymore, which is well, probably at least partially contributing to why I lost interest. When planning my redraws, I decided to try to depict the cats more realistically, because I find that that sort of a style fits better for art of an animal fantasy book series. We want to imagine these characters as real-life cats. I wasn't aiming for complete realism, or if I was, you'll never know. Just something more in that direction than the style in the 2022 piece. Another reason for why I wanted to lean towards realism more is simply because, as I said, it's been a while since I last drew cats. And realism, in my experience, is the overall easiest style to pick up. There are, after all, a lot of cat pictures online that you can reference. I used a lot of references. You should also use a lot of references. At this point, you may also be noticing that I'm working on a background. The 2022 piece barely really had one. I think I remember considering making one back then as well, but I got intimidated by the idea of having to draw a waterfall. Back in 2022, and even some of 2023, I was really not sure how to approach making backgrounds. I would make the main focus of the piece, usually a character, very polished and detailed, and then try to do a similar amount of detail for the background, notice that it looks out of place to have a similar amount of detail in the foreground and background, then either delete the background entirely or put Gaussian blur on it. This was a bad method and something that I think I finally learned not to do towards the end of 2023. Nowadays, I find it less important to really polish the central character and more important to define the entire scene with the bare minimum detail to convey as much information as possible while spending as little time as possible. I rarely render any of my paintings to completion anymore. I prefer to stop at the point when I can tell what's going on and there is no particular detail bothering me. This 2024 redraw is very unpolished, if you zoom in on Feathertail, for example, you can see that there's not really all that much going on in there, in terms of detail. It's mostly just this kind of blurry mess. And yet, with less detail and with less time spent on the drawing than in 2022, it manages to communicate more. There is a cave and a waterfall, there are these little ridges on the stalagmite... 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 I don't know what this is called. There's more depth. There is a better sense of where the light is coming from, more colors, a better sense of motion, despite the fact that I only spent a bit over an hour on it, and despite the fact that it's less detailed and more messy, I can honestly say that I think it is a massive improvement from the previous version. Also, I gave Feathertail a fluffy tail, because how the fuck did I not think of that before? I am very happy with how this drawing turned out. 
Moving on to number 4, Cinderpelt. Remember how I said I wouldn't change the composition unless I thought it was necessary? Well, I have already been changing the composition of this piece every single time, so why not do it again? The 2022 piece is good, but I was really really bothered by the composition here. There's just this massive empty space here, especially with the scene going on where Sorrel Tail and Cinderpelt are supposedly trapped in the... Oh fuck, it's supposed to be the nursery, isn't it? Okay, well, I only realized that now. So I did draw the medicine cat den, oopsie, anyways. If Cinderpelt and Sorrel Tail are trapped in the den, then why is there just this empty space here? Couldn't they just go there and escape. So I needed to once again change the composition. This time there's this weird almost like fish eye perspective going on, which immediately gave me trouble because I realized I don't actually know how to draw a cat's hissing mouth from this angle. I did eventually figure it out, but I would just like to mention that sketching this drawing took me almost as long as the entire feather tail one. This one has taken longer than the others every single year, so it's not all that surprising. I don't think the perspective is perfect, but it does its job. You might also be noticing that the scar on Cinderpelt's leg and her more recent injury are a lot less visible. This is because I looked up images of cat scars and cat injuries for this drawing, and I realized that they're actually not all that visible. Due to all the fur in the way, cat injuries aren't as easy to see as a human's would be. Scars, if visible at all, are usually mainly just missing or patchy fur at the spot. For my limited research, anyways. So I toned down the visibility of the injuries quite a bit, and then the harsh lighting I applied obscured them even further. I also looked up cats giving birth for this drawing to use as a reference, and I quickly found out that I am not immune to all imagery. You're probably noticing that I'm playing with the colors a lot more than I did in 2022. Back then I was really in my monochromatic era, meaning that I would mainly use one hue for the entire piece, or at the very least overlay it with just one hue to kinda get all the colors to be closer to one another. Now with the feather tail drawing I was already adding some new colors in there, but here especially I really wanted to make the reds quite hard to make the scene more attractive and chaotic looking, I suppose. I really fell in love with using more vibrant colors in 2023. I had to change Cinderpelt's pose from what I initially planned, because I realized uh, she would be off balance if her right front and hind legs were both being held up. This unfortunately made the pose sort of strange. I feel like I preferred the 2022 pose, but changing the pose now would have messed with the composition, which was the whole reason I went changing things in the first place. So I decided to leave the pose like this. The Badger was once again sort of challenging to make look trending, since European Badgers are such polite looking handsome boys, gender neutral. Even when supposedly angry, it's cute. This thing never did anything wrong in its life. Speaking of which, as I was drawing, I started thinking about the Badgers in Warrior Cats. The Badgers are attacking the cats here because the cats one day decided to move in and drive out any species that might threaten them from their new territories. It's not uncommon for the Warrior Cats to fight with other species, and I wouldn't even think it was unreasonable if not for the fact that the Badgers were confirmed to be sentient and intelligent just like cats, only a couple of books before this one. Of all species, why did the writers pick the badgers? And the badgers are made out to be evil here as well, even though like they're just protecting their own territory. I don't- oh my fucking god, holy fucking yikes. Okay. <sighs> why pick the badgers? I just think every time I revisit the Warrior Cat series at all, like even think about it. I keep finding these kind of questionable things. Honestly, I don't even think this one is intentional, I just think the books are written kind of haphazardly. But like, fucking yikes, warrior cats. I'm a bachelor apologist. I think it especially really strikes me now, because I have read books with similar situations that handle them better, in my opinion, and I just, ah. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, I decided that I would add Sorrel Tail in last. I had planned a spot for her and everything, but as I finished drawing Leaf Pool, I realized that the drawing was kinda looking finished. And my policy is not to keep working on these if they look about done. So I removed Sorrel Tail. Goodbye. To be honest, she was already kind of an afterthought in the drawing from 2014, so like, it's not changing too much from the original. Okay, maybe it is. I, I think the colors in this piece are very nice, and it's hopefully easier to read at a glance than any of the previous ones. Next time I'll draw the correct environment, I promise. Next up, we have number three. Batcher Paw slash Fang. The immediate issue I had with this one was that the 2022 piece 
is already kind of really good. It's a very simple drawing, but there weren't any issues I could immediately spot, aside from the slightly strange wound on the stomach and the strangely neatly trimmed grass. This is meant to be a wild field, I believe, so I thought it might be good to draw grass that's taller. This was the beginning of my troubles. I mostly stuck to the original composition and colors. I had to tweak Badger Fang's posture a bit to make it work with the pseudo-realistic style I was going for. As a side note, it feels extremely extremely strange to look at these really cute pictures of sleeping kittens with the express purpose of using those pictures to teach yourself how to draw a dead kitten. I am not happy about this. Drawing the long grass, as I mentioned before, turned out to be rather difficult. You can see me experimenting with different brushes and overlays for a long time, honestly for way too long. This piece took me almost as long to draw as the cinder pelt one, despite being extremely simple in comparison. I struggled with finding pictures of long grass photographed from straight above, and I was already halfway done with drawing the grass when I finally found some decent references. I originally wanted to have some of the grass covering Batcherfang, but it made the piece harder to read, so I had to go back and delete a lot of that grass. At the very end, I sort of just slapped the lens blur on it and called it a day. I still prefer this drawing over the one I made in 2022, because despite how messy it is, the long grass does look pretty nice. However, since drawing the grass took so long and I had very few things to say about this piece, I will take this moment to talk about my changed views on art improvement. If you've been around, you'll probably remember that I used to do a lot more improvement content than I do nowadays. The improvement content was meant to act as encouragement for myself and other artists in that they would continue to get better as long as they kept drawing year after year, and therefore they shouldn't get discouraged if their art isn't great at the start. Now, I still stand behind the idea that yes, your art will inevitably improve if you keep practicing it, but this improvement ethic of mine was always meant to act as a sort of counter-argument or a defense against the internet cringe culture. If you don't remember, which might be the case because I honestly don't see this content around nearly as much anymore myself, there used to be this trend of people who usually weren't artists themselves, finding art made by beginners and then compiling it into to cringe compilations, or tearing them apart with commentary, like, ooh, look at how bad this child's art is. And then these types of videos would get hundreds of thousands of views sometimes, which, as you can imagine, wasn't great for the morale in the online art communities. I find it interesting that this was treated as genuine content instead of just weird cyberbullying. At the time, I would be somewhat vocal about my distaste for this type of content, saying that it would make young artists quit, which then would never allow them to grow into experienced, good artists. However, nowadays my thoughts are more along the lines of there is literally nothing wrong with being bad at art. There should not be a moral necessity to get good at it. I think people should be allowed to be inexperienced, to make their weird little sans excreter animation memes, FNAF shipping art, whatever the heck. Because god forbid the literal children express themselves and have fun on the internet. Actually, I shouldn't be saying children, because adults should also be allowed to make art at whatever scale level they're at, without having to face scrutiny for it. I was so based for uploading the original video back in 2014. Fuck the internet for being so mean to people all the time. Okay, rant over. Look, it's a dead kitten that I drew. While improvement shouldn't be a necessity or the end goal of making art, it will happen if you do it for 10 years straight. So let's move on to redrawing the next top 5 saddest warrior's death. Which is another kin. The non-binary cocaine child themselves. And this is just another one where I ended up changing the original composition by a lot. <laughs> if you've seen my previous videos, you may remember that I have complained about my difficulties in conveying the scale of cats a lot, because cats are really just really itty bitty, tiny. And this is a two months old kin, so they're going to be even smaller. Musket looks absolutely huge in this old piece, and I have despaired about this every single time I've redrawn this. During 2023, I slowly worked my way towards being a bit more comfortable with drawing small characters in grand environments, so I feel like I am a bit better equipped to deal with Musket than before. And the only way I could think of that could fix the scale issue was to change the way I approached this drawing. The previous Feathertail and Musket drawings, as well as my other art from the 2022 era, had the backgrounds added in 
them as kind of an afterthought, which then led to the drawings being kind of flat and strange, where it's difficult to tell the scale of objects or the distance between them. With my feather tail piece, the situation was a little better, because at least there's a stone pillar in the foreground, with feather tail providing some sense of scale, but musket here sort of just exists in the void, with some of the tiniest trees anyone's ever seen. And since a great part of musket's tragedy, making them one of the top five saddest warrior cat stats, is that they die really a lot younger than almost any other character in the warrior series. They're small, they're a baby. The composition of the piece was making them look absolutely humongous. It wasn't working, so I completely changed everything. Honestly, I feel like I could have even made them smaller still, but at least it's a massive improvement over the original. I also decided to add Blue Fur and her two other kits faintly in the background, just to fill the piece a bit more and potentially make it sadder. Though they're sort of easy to miss, like a kind of easter egg in the background. I would have never attempted to draw an entire forest landscape back in 2022, even if I had thought of it at the time. I mentioned this briefly before, but I was incredibly uncomfortable with drawing backgrounds back then. Over the past two years, I have slowly been working on drawing more environments, and I am finally at the point where I can suggest a snowy forest without spending five fucking years drawing it. This piece only took me a bit over an hour to finish. I struggled with a few things here and there, like making Mosquit the clear focus of the piece and enforcing the perspective so that Bluefur and the rest of the litter don't look smaller than their supposed to, which at the end it's kind of hard to tell their size due to the difficulty of conveying perspective in a snowy landscape. But I do think I mostly manage, so that it's at the very least not too jarring. As for the color scheme, I picked blue as the lighting color, uh, but red as the shading color since they're opposite to one another on the color wheel. I have had the privilege of viewing a ton of snow in real life this winter, and I have been paying somewhat close attention to how their colors work. Realistically, since this scene takes place during nighttime, it would be a bit more dark, though the snow does do its part in making the night seem a lot brighter. Then again, it is meant to be nighttime in literally every single one of these saddest death drawings, and I have not cared. I'll just do whatever color scheme looks good. But yeah, though this one does still have some issues with the scale, I am overall very very happy with it. On to the last one, number one saddest warrior cat's death. Spotted leaf. This one kind of broke me. Alright, so the only things that really bothered me about the 2022 version of this drawing were the slightly awkward pose here. Every year I bring these two cats closer, but still they are social distancing. And also the big chunk of mostly empty space up here, and adjacent to that, the fact that this is meant to be a great battle and yet there are no other cats in the image. In trying to insert other cats, I initially struggled quite a bit with the composition, before realizing that I had accidentally messed up the perspective and needed to redraw my sketch. I was kind of tired that day, have mercy. Except that instead of actually redrawing it, I just kind of took the things I had already drawn and slapped them onto a composition that was very similar to the 2022 piece. Drawing Firestar and Spotted Leaf themselves was basically smooth sailing. I had decided to ditch the more human pose I had been using before as it didn't fit well with the pseudo-realistic style I was doing. So instead of having Spotted Leaf hold Firestar's chin, I just had her kind of dying on the ground with paint squinty eyes, while Firestar rubs the side of his face against her, probably smelling her, knowing him. My method of coming up with fur patterns has been pretty much the same with each of the drawings, where I just sort of look up images of various cats and then draw the ones that remind me of the characters. I can't really be relying on my usual designs here, since they're cartoony and don't quite work with the style. Oh, also, I got an annoying amount of comments on the 2022 drawing about how I supposedly made Spotted Leaf too fat. Now, she was meant to be just very fluffy here, however, the fact that I got so many comments about it pissed me off at the time, to the point that I decided to make Fat Spotted Leaf my headcanon and I didn't see any reason not to maintain that here. So I took a moment to study cat fat distribution, because it's not the same as it is in humans. I found it interesting how it barely goes to the legs at all. I think the reason that I left the background cats out of the 2022 drawing was the fact that I was chronically afraid of spending time on drawing anything that wasn't the main focus of the drawings, which, baby North, you don't need to give the same amount of detail to background characters as you would to the main focus. I thought. Yeah, so at this point in the drawing process, everything was still going smoothly, but then I started fucking everything up. 
Instead of drawing the background with a similar method as with the musket or cinder belt or feather tail drawings, you know, without layering it too much, just kind of trusting the process, I started layering it like I did with the 2022 drawing and shading and rendering everything completely in the wrong order and then nothing lined up anymore and I kept trying to fix it and then I realized I've already spent two hours on the drawing when I only spent a bit more than an hour on the other ones, so I panicked combined all the layers and then started trying to fix things on just one layer by using copious amounts of lens blur and then just painting on top of the unfinished drawing. Now, it is not that unusual for my drawing process to end like this, with me going in to add details and fix mistakes in post. I did this to some extent with all the other drawings as well, but going back and blurring out details you've added before is a horrendous use of your time, and it is exactly what I was doing back in 2022. Come on now, North, all right. <laughs> Eventually, after adding a bunch more details like the I don't feel so good fire star lighting effect of spotted leaf fucking evaporating into the moon, I was finally at the point where I was happy enough with the drawing to stop working on it. I don't even think it's bad. I'm just pissed that it took me so much longer than intended. For what it is, which is an alright drawing that's kind of blurry and low on detail, it should ideally not have taken me like three hours to draw. Do I think it's better than 2022 drawing? If you don't look too close, it is. I do like the colors better. Alright then, we're at the end. This is where I would have originally inserted my speech from earlier, but instead let us have a quiet moment for the top 5 saddest warriors deaths 2024. Okay, thanks, bye.